Well, I'll never forget the day that my parents dropped me off at college and we got everything all moved into my dorm room and settled in. Uh, my roommate went off to Target to get some needed supplies. My parents said goodbye. And I remember sitting in my cute little chair in my cute little dorm room and I had this sinking feeling in my stomach when I realized I don't know anybody here. <laughs> and it would lead me on this quest to make friends and make friends quickly. But that feeling is real. And I think there's a surprising reason that some of us feel lonely today. So let's talk about that from a biblical perspective and what you can do. It is a beautiful day. I am squinting at you. I'm gonna put these on and let's talk about connection. I, as I was digging into this topic, I read a couple of books that I'm gonna put in the notes below that I'll reference, but there are some amazing science about our need for connection and our need for other people. One of the most important things that I came across was we have this hard wiring to be connected uh, for physical safety and also for emotional and social well-being. But that need for physical safety in numbers actually causes us not to sleep well and to have this higher stress hormone happening in our bodies when we're alone. And so it's so significant to us physically that the risk of dying prematurely is greater if you're experiencing loneliness than if you were experiencing obesity or smoking 15 cigarettes per day. That's how significant and how adversely loneliness can affect our physical well being. And it makes sense. You know, in Ecclesiastes, the writer said, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But who can keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And you know, this is just super practical wisdom that the author is writing. He's saying, hey, we're gonna get more done if there's two of us, we're safer together, we're warmer together. And at the end where it says a cord of three strands is not quickly broken, it's alluding to the fact that it's us and our brother or our friend and God that creates really an immovable force in our lives. Now I mentioned that that kind of hardwiring in our brain that is designed to keep us in groups for physical safety and emotional well-being. The really interesting effect of that that I think might be undermining some of us, if some of us are experiencing loneliness right now, there's an interesting kind of paradox that happens. When we feel lonely, we actually tend to decline invitations or prefer isolation. So basically, whether it's because of that hardwiring in our brains or maybe because insecurity if we're like do people really want to be around me they have enough friends they don't want to hear from me it actually undermines our ability to connect with others so if you're experiencing a sense of loneliness right now or if you've noticed you don't have the same connections that you've had maybe in past seasons of life you may find that you have to actually work harder to overcome that predisposition. I was shocked by this because, I mean, honestly, you know, when I was sitting there in my college dorm room and I realized that I was all alone, the very next day we had like a mixer that was designed to help us get to know other freshmen. And so we were having this little picnic out on the, the square, the common area. And I was sitting there with my roommates and I'm like scanning around looking for who I could possibly be friends with. And I noticed uh, two guys who had on weightlifting t-shirts. And I had done some uh, competitive weightlifting in high school. I also was an athletic trainer. So I had worked a lot with the athletes and I was like, I think I could hang out with them. And so I went and struck up a conversation with them. And then I invited myself to hang out with them every night for the next two weeks. So it would be amazing. I, as the day went on and I went through my classes, that, that kind of pit would settle back in my stomach and I would feel that like intense feeling of loneliness. And then I would text them and be like, hey, you guys wanna get dinner or hang out? And I would go hang out with them. And then it would all go away. I remember walking home back to my dorm every night and just feeling light and myself and hopeful again. And it's another interesting fact that social pain registers the same in our brain as physical pain. 
So if someone has ever said something harsh about you or to you or against you, or we've heard it come back to us through the grapevine, you know, that old adage, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me, is actually not true. Those words can be as painful as those sticks and stones. So again, we might have some things to overcome in our life, but I think there's so many instances in the Bible and also again looking at this just from a scientific perspective that encourages us to persevere, to overcome, and to choose relationships in our life. This is Romans 12, uh, 9 and on. It says, love must be sincere. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. You know, over and over again in the New Testament, Paul is referring to the church or the people of God as a body. And what's so beautiful about this imagery is a body is inseparable. A body functions to sustain life and achieve its purposes. And it's this beautiful picture of connection. Now, how though practically can we see that in our lives today? especially in this time of history when it feels like we've never been more separate, either because of things that are happening uh, with the health crisis in the world or because of technology. The author of one of the books that I was reading talked about how when he would go to a restaurant or a coffee shop to work, he forced himself intentionally to smile, chat with, and talk to the people around him. And then when he needed to get up to use the restroom, rather than packing up his laptop and his phone and taking everything with him, he would ask someone to watch his stuff for them. And one guy, when he got back from the restroom, commented to him, he said, I can't believe you just asked a perfect stranger to watch your stuff. You trusted me. And that stranger had a smile on his face knowing that someone trusted him. And the author said that for hours afterwards, he felt encouraged by that interaction. And again, it's saying, share with the Lord's people and people who are in need, practice hospitality, be devoted to one another, honor others as better than yourselves. There's this beautiful humility that we're supposed to take on in this place of choosing to be interconnected with the body and with others. And again, I I think it's so beautiful that the Bible tells us to do this, but then science is constantly backing it up and saying, no, no, like really your brain is hardwired for connection. The last statistic that I'll leave you with today that again, I was shocked to read was showing that new brain science shows that when our brain is idle, it doesn't turn off. And I think most of us gals feel that way, like our brains are always going. But what you might notice is that our brains are often mulling over past social interactions or conversations. In fact, up to 20% of our waking hours are spent with our brain idly reconsidering our social interactions and our social status in the world. And so again, we just see over and over again how we're hardwired for relationship and how we're incentivized when we take time to humble ourselves, to serve one another, and to honor those around us. So two super practical things that you can do today if you find that you're experiencing some of this loneliness, especially if you're experiencing um, limitations in your ability to socialize with others right now, here's two practical things that you can do today. The number one thing is to just spend one quarter hour or 15 minutes intentionally connecting with someone that you love. So this could be a spouse, it could be a child, a loved one, a family member, or a neighbor. Just 15 minutes helps restore our brain and our physical being to know that we are connected and that we are part of a greater community. And so, I mean, I found this at the end of the day, if I'm just feeling a little off or like, you know, sometimes you'll turn on like YouTube or Netflix or something just to get like a little zone out time. But often at the end of that, I don't feel better. And I'm like, oh, I need to pick up the phone. Or maybe I've been texting with someone, but it's like, no, I actually need to talk with them. Better yet, video chat with them and see them and enjoy their facial expressions and that feeling of connection with one another. The good news is, your brain feels connected, whether it's one-on-one, in person, a phone call, or a video chat. So that will give your brain the stimulus it needs to know that it is connected in a greater social community. The second thing, and I had, I couldn't believe this, the second thing is to volunteer once per week. Again, that goes back to humbly serving and loving our neighbor. 
So if you volunteer once per week, it's the same increase in satisfaction in your life as getting a $50,000 per year raise. Amazing. And we all know this, whenever we go out of our way to serve or love somebody, we always feel better. And so again, maybe you're feeling like, wow, my social connections are a little weak right now. I don't even know who I'm gonna call. Well then go ahead and start serving. Maybe you'll meet some nice people that you can talk to as well. But even again, going back to that lie, I just wanna encourage you, there are people that wanna talk with you. There are people that would love to hear from you. And if you genuine, genuinely are feeling like, no, I really don't have those social relationships that I need in my life, then pray. Ask the Lord. And I have seen over and over again, as seasons of my life has changed, as people have moved or left a job and are no longer in close proximity to me, the Lord has always been faithful to bring new people into my life. In fact, those uh, weightlifting athletes that I met on my like third day of college became some of my closest friends. And so I would encourage you, sometimes we have to go a little bit out of our comfort zone and understand that your brain right now might be saying, no, we're feeling isolated, we want to maintain that. It's a weird paradox that our brain does. It's sort of a safety mechanism. You might have to overcome that. You might have to ask the Lord to help you, but I promise that He will be faithful to lead you into connection and community. So Father, I pray right now, Lord, would you help each one of us to strengthen our social relationships, Lord? Father, would you help us to seek out those around us who love us, who want to connect with us, who also may be lonely themselves? Lord, help us, give us wisdom to know who those people are. And Father, bring us into relationship. Bring us into relationship with your body, with others who love and are passionately serving and worshiping and going after you. Bring us into ones who, in community with ones who need us, who need our love and our service and our care. Ultimately, Lord, help us as a body to be strengthened, that we would be strengthened in our love for you, we would be strengthened in our worship, and we would be strengthened in preaching your word, your name, and bringing others into your salvation. So I bless each one of us now, in Jesus' name, amen.